So over the past couple weeks, I haven't really recorded very much. I found a huge area of rot in my boat that took me basically like a week to kind of just like process and figure out how I'm going to attack it. And then after that, I started putting it into action and chasing rot. Um, that is a job. But anyways, I have a rather short video this week, so I'm just going to do like a short little clip of what I filmed and then after that we're going to get into a little Q&A session of some questions that people have commented or DM'd me on Instagram. Ahoy there and welcome to She Sails Solo. I'm Reagan, a certified yoga teacher and water woman. In July of 2022, I decided to follow my dreams and move across the country with my adopted dog Ozzy to move onto my 40 foot warm catamaran Kikapoo that I got for a dollar. The boat had been left sitting in the marina for about eight years and was in need of a lot of love. With a tight budget and the help of a few friends and strangers, I'm now living in the middle of a construction zone on the water. Although I only have a little boat building experience, I'm taking things one step at a time as I share the highs, lows, and overall reality of boat ownership as I prepare Kikapoo to sail around the world. If you'd like to help keep the project afloat, please consider supporting us on Patreon for access to exclusive content and yoga classes. Now, let's cast off the lines and set sail into this week's episode. so close to just cutting a giant hole in the side of my boat because this is just not not working so i just got back from a sailing trip uh i sailed offshore from brisbane california to monterey i was crewing for a friend i just put a bunch of holes in my boat and i'm about to cut an even bigger hole so right now come down into the boat. That's the outside. Cut all of this through to here, which is all rotten. There's still more rot up here. And then next is the deck. So it's Monday today and we are in the swing of things. My mom is here. She is helping me take some of the wires out. We're basically redoing the entire electrical system on the boat. Uh, we spent yesterday in the city. Say hi, mom. Hi. So that was really fun to be able to go and explore. Karen is down here working on putting some penetrating epoxy on some of our support blocks for the gunnel. And I am about to get started dealing with a giant hole in my boat. So with that, let's get into the Q&A. So the first question that I've gotten a lot is about my decks and how I think they're gonna hold up in weather. Um, so when I originally got the boat, all of the decks were completely floating. They were dug fur that was like super old vertical grain dug fur. Um, there was basically none of that um, in the lumber yard that's nearby definitely none that was in my price range. Uh, I am doing this project on a very, very tight budget, um, which is hard because I'm in the Bay Area, which is basically like the most expensive place in the country. Um, but here I am. This is the boat that I've been wanting and I have it. Um, but I chose Redwood because it has a high resistance to rot um, and it does well in that sort of environment. Um, the only thing is that it's prone to cracking and it swells quite a bit and it's not as like, it's not a hardwood, like it's not really sturdy. So I have supports, um, I have more supports underneath. I have a support basically every 12 inches, um, even some places less. So that's a little bit sturdier. And then I also lashed um, 
the boards down so it's not just floating. So if I were to encounter any heavy weather when I'm out sailing, the deck shouldn't pop up at all. They should sit nice and flat. So the second question that I get a lot is, how did I find the boat? And I touched on this a little bit in my first video about my sailing journey, but basically I found it through the Warm Facebook group. Um, I was helping my friend Kiana with her boat when she was in St. Augustine. Um, and up until that point, I never really considered Warhams. And then I was like, okay, yeah, I definitely want one. So I started looking in the group and this one was listed like two years ago for 15,000. And I messaged the guy and I was like, hey, what are the chances this is still available? And he said, it is, but you need to come look at it. So I flew out to look at it and it was in really, 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 really poor shape. Um, and that is how I ended up finding it. And I made my offer, which was basically nothing um, because of the amount of money and work that I'd have to put into it. Question number three I've gotten is, is the boat structurally okay? Or is it just cosmetic work that needs to be done? Um, when I had first come out to look at the boat, I was basically told that it was mainly just cosmetic work that needs to be done. Um, since actually getting in here and working on it, that is untrue. Um, I have rotten bulkheads. I have, I mean, as you saw earlier in the video, a giant hole in the side of my boat that I'm having to repair. Um, and that is where a stringer is. There's a rib there. That bulkhead has rot in it. So there's like a lot of structural, um, issues and that's, you know, not even touching on like being concerned about the age of the rigging or anything like that. So it is quite a project, um, but I'm trying to take it just like one step at a time. But my goal is just to get the structural things done first and head south as soon as possible because it's so expensive here. I've also gotten a few questions on my sailing classes, uh, like how much were they and how long did it take, which classes I took, um, do I feel like it was worth it? Um, so if you haven't seen that video, I do have a whole video about my ASA classes. I did ASA 101, 103, and 104. Um, all together, it took me about a week. Um, I was sailing like eight hours a day, roughly. Um, I think all together I paid like $1,200 for the classes. For me, it was definitely worth the investment. Um, I feel like especially being a woman, I get like questioned a lot. Like when I was in the boat buying process, I had literally made phone calls where uh, basically like old men were like, I don't think you know what you're doing. I don't think you know how to sail. So like having classes under my belt and doing well in the classes made me feel a lot more confident when people were questioning my competence um, because now I don't have any question about my competence. So I know that when other people do, it's a, it's a them problem, not a me problem. So obviously everyone still has a lot of stuff to learn, but I think the ASA classes are a really good um, basis for all of that. So the next question I get a lot are my sailing plans. Um, I hate answering that question because there are so many places that I want to sail to all around the world. And um, I know my first stop will be down the coast to Mexico, where I'm hoping to only then haul out because no place in the bay wants to haul me because I'm super wide and made of wood and 40 years old and falling apart. So um, hopefully I'll be able to safely make it down the coast and haul out once I get to Mexico. Um, so yeah, after that I don't really know. It's wherever the wind takes me. Last but not least, um, the probably question I get asked the most, which is the most personal question I feel like, is um, how are you affording this? And the answer is I'm paying for it off of savings. Uh, it's been basically an eight year process from the point that I knew that I wanted to sail to get here to where I could afford to buy <laughs> a practically free boat and fix it up and it's money is very stressful 
Um, I know that like once I'm actually out sailing, it'll be a lot better, but having to pay for slip fees and repairs, all of that is really tight. And I will do a full breakdown video once I'm done with the refit um, about that. But basically I saved up roughly $15,000 um, and that is my boat project money. Obviously I've gone through a lot of that so far. Uh, just buying like lumber and hardware and tools and paint and all epoxy, so much epoxy. Um, but all of these things like add up. Um, I am in a place in the Bay Area that's kind of secluded. I don't have a car. I don't have a bike. I don't have anything. So it's not like it's easy to go get a job. So I really am like working on this boat non-stop for like eight hours a day as if it were my full-time job but if you're interested in helping out like I said um, earlier in the video I do have a patreon set up and I have over 65 of my yoga classes um, listed on there ready to take ranging from 15 to 15 minutes to an hour so if you are wanting to be kind and supportive and help this project that is an excellent way to do it it would mean the world to me um, if not, I'm just glad to have people following along and hearing encouraging words. Um, this project a lot of times is overwhelming um, and I wish that I was capturing more of it, but a lot of times I'm just picking up the camera has been the last thing that I've been thinking about. Um, you know, when I'm like covered in epoxy and my dog's like running through paint on my deck. Um, so yeah, but I'm trying to be better and I'm hoping to get this whole patched up and then after that it should be a little bit smoother, I hope. So anyways, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next week, hopefully.